And it weighs one down. Oi! We here, we good? Is it live? Am I live? I'm live, you guys can hear me, right? Let's see. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Let me hide that shit. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's up, guys? Yeah, you can. That's good. It's me, the Foxy. I know. Drake's son, you're here. That's good. Okay. Today, I had a. I just woke up about half an hour ago. And I had a crazy idea, look. Let's make a small mobile game. How hard can it be, right? We're gonna try and do that. All good, I'm Walker. Yeah, what's up, dude? Yeah, so we're gonna be making a small a small mobile game. Um, first, we gotta plan it out, right? Oh wait, I don't have Krita? Oh shit. Okay, one, my, my bad, my bad. I have to download some shit. Windows installer, that's it. Yeah, save that. That's good. Hey, it's there. And Jay, what's up? You're also making a mobile game, Drakeson. That's good. That's good. That's good. Then this will help. Then this will help. I've never made the. Uh, I've never made a mobile game. Uh, so this should be fun. I don't know how long it's gonna take. I don't even have an idea for a game. I just wanted to make it. So yeah. I'm going I'm I'm doing great. Uh it's uh it's uh, what is it today? It's Sunday, right? Saturday, Sunday. Oh this doesn't work. It's not oh it is Sunday, fuck it. It is Sunday. So yeah. I don't know. Hopefully it won't take too long. Um let me just go and download or install Krita. I had to I had to uh, reinstall Windows on my PC because some shit broke, but uh, you know it happens to everybody. Yeah. Um, use Control B to build and run your game. By the way, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, dude. I remember. We're gonna try that out. I'm not gonna create a project yet because I don't even know what to name it. I accept the terms. Install. Sure, why not? I agree. Krita, yes. Your desktop icon, sure. Let's install Krita. You suggest uh, making a cyberpunk punk themed game. I like the idea. I think a lot of people like uh, the cyberpunk theme of like a futuristic city with like neon colors everywhere and crazy shit going on. I think I like that. Uh, I was thinking maybe, you know, something act. Uh, not actual, um, something popular right now, and that would be like COVID or Corona, and uh, I was thinking basing it around that, that, but a very simple game, make a dungeon crawler, nah, 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 that'd be too complicated, I was thinking more of those like uh, really replayable games, like I'm gonna say Flappy Bird right now, because that's the first thing that, you know, popped into my head, something very simple, that's what we're making. Um, I was thinking maybe you can't hear me. Are you sure, dude? Because I, ch I, I checked. It works. I checked and it works. One, well, my bad. Wait, let me check. Uh, let me check. Let me check. Does this work? I'm going to say Flappy Bird right now. That's oh, you can't hear me. That's good. Yeah. Uh, it's working. It's working. That's good. Um, Okay. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's open up Krita, and I like playing shit in Krita because I can just draw around, and that's it. All right, so maybe like, I don't know. Yeah, silly, silly COVID game. Can we go over input system? Sure. 
I've never made that input system for a mobile, so that should be fun, right? That should be fun. Like keep a room clean. Yeah, yeah, something like that. I like that idea. I was thinking maybe like a scroller, so you know, your character's here and it it's always scrolling, so you're always going up. And then I don't know, maybe you can pick up masks to increase your uh, resistance or something and like wash your hands if you don't wash them you know you go to shit and and stuff like that so let's just create a new file and we'll be we'll be planning some uh shit in there uh wait let's let's create that okay um let's grab a brush real quick and i'll just go grab my uh drawing tablet because I want to I wanna draw some shit. I'll be right. I mean, it's there. So just like you guys can talk. I'll still see what you're talking about. There you go. If you guys ever wonder what drawing tablet I use. It's a very, it's about, it was about 100 euros. Uh, it's a vague... 30 or something I'm not sure, actually sure anymore um, so yeah it's this tablet it's pretty big it's uh, bigger than the usual like budget tablet I don't know it's like the size of my forearm something like that so yeah we'll be using this to draw some shit and plan out I know there's a lot of software out there that will uh, let you plan out your game but I like just drawing shit on a paper and this is the closest thing I got to a paper online um, so let me just real quick find where I put my cable for this shit. Um, wait, I'm not sure actually. Um, uh, one sec. There should be a cable somewhere that I'm not using or some shit. Once I gotta go under the table. Oh, there it is. Found it, found it, found it. There we go. And that's it, that's it, okay, found the cable, no, we're not gonna chew on the on the cable, that'd be fucking uh, atrocious, and I'm not sure if I have the drawer, dra oh shit, Phoenix3302, thank you for the donation, through Super Chat, nice, thanks for the dollar, dude, I appreciate it a lot, I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. There, you get a kiss. <laughs> start fast. I'm going to start fast, yes. Um, you have to go, Drakeson, in an hour. Okay, that's fine. Is he going to make a 3D? I think it's going to be 3D, I'm pretty sure, because I'm not too good with 2D. Trust me on that. Uh, start fast. Thanks for the helpful tutorials. Now I can do animations in you so I can flex on my friends. Yeah. <laughs> no problem, dude. That's why I made them. That's like the main reason I make them. You can flex on your friends. That's the, that's the point of life, dude. I appreciate you. Thanks. Uh, let's see if this is working. Because if it's not, I have to download drawer, uh, drivers. And it's not working. So that's good. Uh, let me just go and find the drivers for this shit. I'm 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 kind of unprepared because I this idea popped into my head. I was just like, "Fuck it, let's make it." Um, wh which vague? Uh, I think it's a uh, a thirty driver. Yeah. Can we make games with Python? Sure, you can. I actually have the Python downloaded. I'm not. I'm, I don't like it's. It's a bit weird because it's too simple, um, so that's why I don't get it. Like working with C sharp was much easier for me. I don't know why, but Python is just too simple. This is me. I was working on some login system, but yeah. So definitely Python is an option. I love Python. It's just too simple for me, but I'll still I'll still be working on it. Can I make a tutorial on Krita? Sure, I could. Uh, I don't know what what kind of a what kind of a tutorial you were thinking about. Like, what would I do in a tutorial? 
maybe just like a basic intro to it, like the UI and what you can do with it. I sure I could, sure I could. That'd be that'd be cool. Let me just download the drivers. I don't know. Hopefully, I won't have to restart my PC. I don't think I will. So I I will have to restart Krita. That's that's for sure. Uh, I should have probably grabbed some water for myself. Start the driver setup. Yeah, let's go. There we go. Show driver settings. It's not working. <laughs> ah, there we go. Uh, is it working? Let's check. Oh, it's working. Nice. A mapping function. Um, it's mapped onto my screens, and I want to map it on just the monitor too. Uh, working area. That's good. Pen mouse. Right hand. That's good. It will work now. Um, simple. My PC specs. I have a, a my graphic card. Pretty shit. A GTX ninety or no? Sorry, GTX nine sixty with four gigabytes of video RAM. I got a Ryzen something thirteen hundred. I think. Um, my PC. This PC is that it? Yeah. Let me check. Uh, yeah, it's a Ryzen no twelve hundred quad core with three point one gigahertz. I have eight gigabytes of DDR four RAM. Um, yeah, I'm looking to upgrade to sixteen. I ha I need about fifty bucks for that. So hopefully I can do it soon because it will improve it a lot. And I have like a SSD, uh, like a. 200 gigabyte SSD and a 500 gigabyte HDD, which is fine because I don't play a lot of games and the ones I do play are quite simple actually or quite not simple but oh, where's my mouse dude what the fuck happened <laughs> it's not working what happened hi hi vector oh vector I haven't seen you in a while dude um what's up what happened to my PC it's completely fucked up Look at this, Croatia not here. What the fuck? My PC all, all fucked up all of a sudden. Uh, text to speech and fuck that shit. Let's install that and uh, pretend that did not happen. You used to have a two gigabyte uh, VRAM 960. Yeah, this one's like four gigabytes, so it's good, but um, yeah, it's kind of getting out of data. I really want to grab a uh, RTX because they're really good for blender they have like some special cores for blender so i want to get that one i don't know which one like which one rtx maybe rtx 20 2060 maybe like those i think that that's a pretty good one uh for the for the price it is how much oh yeah and you got ray tracing which you know you gotta have ray tracing it's 2021 what you're talking about so yeah, I was thinking maybe I could get one of these once I get some money. Although that'd be quite hard. Uh, it will be about 300 megahertz or 400 megahertz more powerful, so that's good. And it got six gigabytes, so that's pretty good. Yeah, I was thinking I'd get that one. Um, actually, that's pretty good. Um, fuck, what? What am I doing? Options. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Um. My vague is not working, or my tablet. I'm sorry again for this. Uh, map map to that one, right? Yeah, should be working. Where is it? What's happening, dude? What the, what the fuck? The fuck is happening? How did I turn on this? You see, this is like, people think, oh, I'm going to make a game, it's going to be super easy, and then you get stuck on shit like this. Does it happen to you guys? Because it happens to me all the fucking time. I get stuck on shit like this. Like, the fuck am I? Oh, there we go. Now it's working. You can see the fade. So if I press it, yeah, that's good. That's good. Let's just delete that. Okay, so uh, we're going to have a theme of some sort. Uh, the theme. Oh shit, that's fucking hard now. Because I mapped it on two. I mapped it on two monitors. 
and I really want to map it on one, which will not allow. Oh, that's one. I'm a, I'm about to break this shit. You know it. Um. Ah. Oh, what the fuck, man. Okay. I think we're not gonna be doing this. Monitor one. Let's see that shit. Oh, now it works. For some reason. Now it's not working. Look. Let's not... This is not really interesting to watch, so... You upgraded from 8 to 16 and increased by 35%. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm hoping for. You're gonna get a snake? Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> nice. Nice to interact with you too, my dude. My dude. Right, okay, so fuck Krita. Fuck Krita, that's what we learned today. Let's just uh, take a text file and um, text document, like call it game. And let's open that up, see what we can uh, write out. So the theme is obviously uh, COVID or COVID-19. COVID, is that too small for you guys? Can I increase the font size? Zoom, zoom in. Which was control plus, okay. Right, okay. There we go, we zoomed in so you guys can see. So we got COVID and it's gonna be a simple game. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Hmm. If you guys have any ideas, feel free to, you know, put them in the chat and I'll make sure I don't credit you in the game. Just kidding, but I won't credit you. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be a COVID game. Hey, Game Boy, what's up, my dude? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay, so what we gotta do, we gotta do is uh, figure out what type, like which part is gonna connect to COVID. I'm ha okay, so it's either gonna be like a static room and then you gotta do shit around it, or it's gonna be like a panning sort of world that, you know, you kind of have to get the speed along the way. You give a COVID-19, a 2D game, you kill Corona, you save immunity. Okay, okay, so th there could be like a stat immunity. And the dirtier, the sh or the, the, the dirtier the shit gets... Um, you get less immunity, you die if your immunity is zero, because it's corona, you die instantly. That's what media thinks, right? We could do something like that. Okay. So it's gonna be a 3D game. But I think I'm gonna go for like a 2D setup. So the, the it's gonna be a 3D, like 3D models and shit. But it's gonna be in a like a 2D, maybe like a top down or something. You're gonna upload the this live stream so that we can follow the steps to make a mobile game. I never did mobile game before. Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna upload it, of course. Mato will not be a 3D, but we can make a Corona vaccination tycoon game, maybe. A tycoon, really? Ah oh, no, ah oh, no. I'm taking ideas. Yes, Ravanin. I'm not really for a tycoon. What are we in Roblox or something? Yeah, tycoon not not for me. Let my lights fucking too bright. Can I not be so bright? Okay. Um hmm. Do you guys want to see my light setup? This. Okay, this is my lamp. And it's got a mask here. Okay, let me turn it off for a second. It's got like a mask here so it dampens the light. It's the most DIY shit I've ever seen. But it's good. What about taking the virus FPS kit from Unity and extending it? Extending it. The virus FPS kit? What, what, what? Can you please repeat that? Unity virus FPS kit. COVID-19 clicker game? Yeah, something like that. I was thinking something like that. He was working with that. Oh, the FPS kit, like that one. 
Care kits. FPS. Unit that learn. You mean expand this shit? Nah, this is look. Uh, this okay I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something so what I was thinking you know like you're waiting for something maybe like at the dentist and you're like waiting to get your name called and um, like you don't you're not gonna go play like a game that takes like half an hour I want to make those games that like you die in 10 seconds and then you just try over again or start over again and like that, that'd be cool. Something like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, you have saved 50 bucks. I don't know. I did, but like I need it for other shit. <laughs> I, I am a person that lives. So like I don't have $50 or euros to just like kind of give to my PC. Sadly. Where I'm from Croatia, right next to Italy, Croatia, yeah. Hey, Frostside, what's up? So it's going to be 3D, maybe top down for now. Um, simple, quick, and easily repeat. repeat. Is that how you write it? I'm, I'm not sure, actually. We're going to pretend that's how you write it. Don't mock me on my grammar. <laughs> Just kidding, you can mock me. You gotta mock something. Uh, right. Right. Uh, let's go. Okay, fuck it. We're gonna go 2D. That's much simpler. 2D, we're gonna go 2D. And like this is how, so I'm gonna create a model in 3D and then I can just take a sh snapshot of it uh, from maybe like top down or like the direction I need. And then we can have the animations. I think that's pretty good. Okay. Uh, so I think we can all agree it's gonna be like a COVID clicker or something. COVID clicker. Mario type Corona game. She, that'd be cool. I'm not that skilled though. <laughs> Let's create a new project. I want to say like vaccinating the world by starting just by one and turning it into 100 maybe. It's not this game category called Tycoon Clicking Games. Oh, you mean something like that? That'd be fucking cool. Let's call it COVID Killer, like that. I think that's pretty good. We're gonna be working in, I guess, 2D. Fuck it, let's go with 2D. I never worked in 2D, so that'd be fun. Um, there's Unity Projects here, and I'm just gonna select that folder. And it's gonna be Code Killer, let's create that. Uh, okay, that's cool idea, Ilber. I think that's what your name, Ilber. Um, simple, quick, easy, repeatable. Let's go with like, maybe COVID Zombies or something, that'd be fucking cool. There's a movie about COVID zombies, zombies, zombies. It's a pretty fucking cool game, if you ask me, or a movie. There's a fly attacking my light. Fuck you, fly. Okay, so. Thing, thing, God damn it, thing. This is how you think. You got to take all your hair, put it here, and then warms up your brain. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay, I have an idea. I have a like what I would like to make. So we'll make like the character, you know, and then it's gonna pan, and you're gonna, just gonna be going up, right? And then there's gonna be shit popping up. Like maybe it'll be like a. I don't know, a dirty doorknob or something. And then, you know, you can't touch that, of course. Then your immunity goes down. And then you can pick up masks that increase your immunity. Or, like, the hand sanitizer and then increases your immunity. And then, 
I don't know, you you touch a person without a mask and your immunity goes down and you die. Or do it in 3D in Doom style, but you play as doctor by instead of shooting demons you shoot COVID. <laughs> That's a fucking cool idea. That's a game I would love to play. But it's gotta be simple for mobile. Again. That that's a good idea. Maybe make that if you if you can. Mates us. Right, so we're gonna have a panning uh, world. Player must avoid COVID or Corona. Or we're just gonna call COVID and pick up pick up uh, masks, sanitizers. I don't know how to write that. And then that's it, yeah. So we're gonna go with something like that. Like that. Let's uh let's try and make something like that work. So obviously, uh we got the main cam, we got the game, and okay, let me check something. Um Unity 2D uh game camera uh size. Uh, fuck it, let's make it 3D. This is too much shit. I'm already making a fucking game I don't know nothing about. We're gonna go with 3D. Uh, it's quite simple. You click this, and now it's 3D. I know. It's fucking amazing. Uh, this is the main camera, and it's an orthographic, right? Yeah. Uh, let's just uh, change it to perspective. Right, and we're gonna have, like, uh, let's make a plane. Let's make a plane. This will be much easier for me. That's that's what I'm saying. Uh, maybe I'm um, going to use a universal render pipeline. And that shit needs to get imported real quick. So let's just uh, do universal render pipeline. Uh, Unity registry. Universal. Universal RP. Let's install that shit. Uh, and until I make a 3D mobile game where you shoot terrorists, that's a fucking good game. Sounds like a lot of fun. Okay, come on, Universal RP. You always fucking want me, Universal RP. Right, so. So, so, so. Right. So, we're gonna make it so, like, the there's an infinite world or something. And then shit's gonna pop up. And then you gotta, you know, either destroy it, maybe, or uh, something like that. Something like, that. we'll see, we'll see. One sec. Let's fucking wait. And then, uh, of course, we're gonna have like those ads, and you can watch five ads, and you'll literally get all the money in the game. We're going for something like that, right? Maybe make a game like Subway Surfers, like the player needs to run from infected COVID patients and avoid the virus around him. What do you think about this? That's more of uh, something that I like. That'd be fucking cool. Yeah, that'd be amazing. Shit, we could maybe make that. Sounds That sounds so good. Well, it's too many assets. Or is it? It's a cool game. Yeah, that sounds good. That's more of what uh, I was thinking about. Something like that. Uh, come on, come on, you have a universal render pipeline. Why you gotta do this, man? Why you gotta do this? I think the main thing here is gonna be making good shaders because you know mobile ga mobile game has to have that simple look. Uh, we're gonna change this to uh, it's gonna be one, but the X, Y, and Z. This is gonna be like ten. So like we have a big, big space right here. Maybe not ten. We'll do five. Okay. So uh, obviously we have the universal render pipeline, and we need to create. A, wait, my cat is annoying. Come on in. Oh. 
Oi, Aurem Apes. Aurem Apes. Yeah. Uh, let's go rendering universal render pipeline pipeline asset forward renderer and we're just gonna name it like that. Oh now you wanna leave. God damn it. Again, my cat's real stupid, so that's cool. Um let me just get rid of this. And let me just place that somewhere. That's not gonna bother anybody. There we go, there we go. Okay. We're gonna pack that in. There we go. Okay, so yeah, universal render pipeline, you have to go and uh, get to project settings, I'm pretty sure. And graphics, render pipeline, and yeah, that's good. And then uh, obviously you got some materials and you can go edit, um, render pipeline, generate, uh, upgrade project materials to uh, that. Yeah, let's go. Let's go, boy. Right. Did it do it? Where the fuck is this material? Did it upgrade it? Fuck it. We're just gonna create a new uh, new folder for um, materials, and we're gonna create a default uh, default. And let's just put it onto the plane. That's good. We need a directional light. There we go. That's more like it. Good. And also, uh, you'll notice if I maybe place like a 3D object, you can see how dark it is, and the shadow behind it super dark. So to fix that, you can go to Window, and then uh, Rendering, Lighting, and in Environment here, you can change. Uh, oh, it's actually pretty good. Uh, look if it was skybox that'd be cool but like color works better for me and then you can place it like that it's much better so your skybox uh, is a fucking color there we go sun source scene directional light yeah good i was watching your you from turkey by the way nice dude nice some love from turkey that's good uh okay Let's make this material uh, not smooth and let's change it to a bit of a darker color like this. Maybe we'll just go a bit darker. Uh, yeah, good. Let's delete that. So uh, our cameras here and we're going to have a player, which in this case is just going to be a simple cube. Yeah, this is going to be the player and let's place him on zero, one and zero or sorry, 0 0.5. So that should be flat on the ground, right? And uh, the main camera is gonna be on the player. Uh, let's just do that. And maybe we'll just have like a top down view. So we'll have to rotate around X for 90 degrees, right? And we'll just place it zero, zero, except on the Y maybe like fuck, 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 five, right? So, you know, you have, you have a bit of a, space here right i don't know if you guys can see that but this is how it looks um now we can either rotate it a bit like this so you can see in front of yourself but i feel like going like completely top down would be a bit better yeah i think that's much better mm, let's uh, go Okay, let's see how we're gonna do this. Uh, we obviously want to move the player. So we're gonna need some kind of a player controller. Let's uh, just create an RP folder, to plug this into. We need a folder for scripts. And let's make a script for the player uh, motor or something, player motor, that sounds good. I'm just gonna eat some of these while I wait. What well, we already been here for half an hour, dude. Where the fuck did that time go? I don't know what these are called uh, in English. 
in my country they're just called mandarina and that's like i don't know can you guys see that like that it looks like that and then you just kind of pop off one of them and eat like that it's like a small orange except it doesn't taste like an orange it's really sweet Right. So we gotta right now see if we're gonna move using a rigid body or a character controller. I'm thinking character controller. Because then we don't gotta deal with physics. And that's something we don't wanna deal with. Mandarinki in Slovak, yeah, then you guys know what that is. It's fucking delicious. Let me tell you that, okay? So, we're gonna be using a character controller. So let's just get a character controller controller. And in private void start, we're just gonna... In Turkey, it's also called mandarin, a mandalina, and it, it is so sweet. Yeah, it can be really sweet. I love them. Um, we're just gonna say controller is equal to get component controller or uh, sorry uh, character controller right um, so now we can get the character controller on our player and let me just make sure that that's what actually happens um, we're gonna get a rigid body of course on this because rigid body is uh, often used on uh, moving objects to improve performance I don't know if you guys knew that, but yeah. And uh, let's just set the skin width to zero here. Actually, fuck it. We're going to leave it on that. Let's do that. All right, now we have the character controller. What I actually want to do is create some kind of a... Oh, shit. Create some kind of a material for a player. Just so we can see him a bit better. Uh, fuck, we can't do that in there. So just the player. And I don't know. It's going to be maybe like a greenish color greenish color like that it's gonna pop out a lot just so we can see him and turn down the smoothness of course uh, yeah so we're gonna need a private void uh, update and that's we're gonna run the code so I was thinking we move like you're in the middle right like this and then you press or you can't press yeah it's gotta be a swipe so every time you swipe you move one you know row left or right and i was thinking maybe there'd be like three rows just to make it simple so you know you can just do that now since i've never worked with this uh or with the the api like that uh i'll just google unity uh get swipe input like that simple swipe and tap mobile input let's see let's see how that works Get the touch, check for the first touch. Okay, maybe you're interested in this script, it's swipe touch script controller for Android iOS. Tab, double tap, up, down, left, right, up, left, up, right, down, left, down, right. That sounds pretty fucking good. Okay. Unity, get swipe, how to, how to, I guess you gotta write how to. Uh, we don't wanna do it by ourselves. Uh, I'm guessing like you can get the, the touch input. Uh, there's videos I could watch. Swipe manager, right, swipe controllers. And it has like a tap boolean. Simple, just make a simple running animation for the player and the obstacle, virus. Combine the sphere and cylinder to make the virus. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how we're going to do it. It's going to be real simple. Um, if input get mouse button down, that's not, that's not, um, fuck it. Uh, let's do our own shit. And let's see how this works. So, I'm pretty sure that this 
so project settings um, it's gonna have in the input manager something maybe mouse X or sorry no mouse X bar horizontal maybe uh, okay okay uh, maybe we need to go to our build setting file build setting and we're building for uh, uh, iOS maybe let's build it for iOS oh I don't have the iOS mo module fuck yeah let's install it I didn't know I didn't have it like no I don't want that I just want the iOS and let's get the uh, Android build support yeah this is gonna take a while I have read and I agree yes done okay let's let's get that shit rolling okay um, mobile device input unity manual that's what we need right so on mobile devices the input class offers access to a touchscreen accelerometer and geographical location input access to the keyboard on mobile devices is provided via the iOS keyboard uh, touch uh, devices are capable of tracking up to five fingers. I didn't know that. I thought you could only track like two fingers. Retrieve the status of each finger touching the screen during the last frame by accessing the input touches property array. Good. Uh, the unique index for a touch, the screen position of the touch, the screen position changed since the last frame. Status since the last state change. Okay, so I'm having, uh, like, I'm thinking. Uh, we could maybe get the position of the input the initial position of the input and then like check if uh, the input is like at least five units to the left or right and if it is that means we move I'm thinking something like that because this guy this guy right there somebody wait 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 let's get that shit going yeah let's get that shit going uh, like so that's what he's doing he gets the touch like if we get touch get the touch if touch phase is equal touch phase began check for the first touch first phase last or first position last position else if touch phase touch phase moves that'll be the last position based on where the finger is touch phase touch phase ended check if the finger is removed from the screen Last touch position, I'm it to you. check if the drag distance is greater than 20% of the screen height. It's drag, check if the drag is vertical or horizontal. If the vertical movement is greater than the horizontal movement. Okay, I see what they did there. I'm just gonna watch this video real quick. Or, uh, I'm not gonna watch it, but like, I just wanna see how he did it. Let me put that up there so I don't get fucking copyrighted. That'd be fucking nice. For each touch, touch, and input touches. Touch phase is equal began. Right, right, okay, I get that shit. Yeah, okay, he's doing math. Swap. nice okay let's see let's see let's see let's see did this uh oh still not doing its thing okay um fuck it let's uh start creating some ui then so we're gonna have some sort of immunity uh immunity and that's just gonna decrease over maybe not over time oh okay so question here is the immunity gonna decrease over time Cause like if you're running, does the immunity go down just by itself? I think that's a pretty decent thing to do. Maybe you can get like a vaccine and then your immunity is not going down. That's a great idea, guys. That's a great idea. Got a mosquito here. That's nice. So let's go into our scripts and real quick create a, uh, maybe like um, immunity. Uh, is immunity with two M's? Wait, cancel that. Delete that shit. 
Uh, I'm not sure what the, 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 the thing is behind it. Fuck that shit. Um, let's see. Immunity. I don't know how to write it. Uh, yeah, I have two ends. Okay, my bad. I'm an uncultured swine. Immunity. Fuck it. Let's do that. Immunity. Right. So this script is going to be pretty, pretty self-explanatory. We're going to have a public... Um, Public int maybe for immunity. No, it's gonna be a float. Fuck it. Im immunity. Uh, we're gonna have current immunity, and we're gonna have a public float for maximum max immunity. Right. You now, if you guys can see that, let me just uh, zoom in a bit for you guys like that. Maybe you guys can see that a bit better. Yeah. Right, so we're gonna have max immunity and current immunity. And we're gonna have a public float, for now they're gonna be public, uh, immunity, uh, rate, immunity. Like how would I, how would I name that? Decrease, decrease, uh, rate, right? <clears throat> and they're gonna be public, um, pretty much it. Uh, we will just need a public uh, void, or sorry, not public, private void update. And then in update, we can just say, uh, fuck it, wait, uh, private uh, void init, uh, init immunity, or we're just going to call it reset immunity. And we're going to say... Uh, just simply current immunity is equal to max immunity so when we die we just reset it and that's fine now here in private void start we're just gonna uh, reset immunity real quick and then in update we're gonna say a new a new method private void decrease immunity and we're gonna have a uh, float for rate well it's always gonna be the same rate yeah it's always gonna be the same rate so we don't need that uh, we're gonna say current immunity minus equals uh, the the uh, immunity uh, decrease rate right so that's good and we're just gonna decrease immunity here right so we don't have a way of actually show oh we do have a way of showing it we're just gonna look at the script real quick. Uh, the immunity is gonna be on the player. Actually, it's gonna be on my. Uh, fuck it, no, it's gonna be on the player. Uh, let's just plug this in right there. Okay, so the current immunity is gonna be zero. The max immunity, let's say, it's gonna be hundred, and this is gonna this is gonna be five. Okay, so if we start the game. You can see that the current current immunity gets set, and that's really fucking quick. You know why? Because I forgot to uh, decrease immunity uh, with time dot uh, delta time. How fucking smart of me! Okay. Hey Alihar, what's up, my dude? Let's see this. If we click play, and you can see that our immunity goes down. Real fucking quick, five times or five per second. I think that's pretty good for now. Uh, I wanna get a way of actually displaying that. So we're gonna get a UI image, real simple. And uh, this image is gonna be, it's gonna be the the actual, we're just gonna call it immunity, right? And we can place it into uh, the bottom left corner, or actually let's place it into the bottom middle. Like that, or no, sorry, like that. Yeah, uh, let's just set the position there. Let's change the color to black just so you can see it. And it's gonna be with the width, maybe like 200 width. Right, and we're gonna have a text file in there that's gonna be called like the title. And that's gonna just say immunity. And uh, let's do that all caps, immunity. And uh, if you take a look at that file right there. ASAP, hey, dead ninja, I haven't seen you in a while, dude. 
All right. What we can do is uh, parent it to the top here, like that, and set that to zero. Or sorry, zero, and uh, set these to there, like that. And let's increase that to about twenty-four. And we're gonna set the color to white so we can see it. All right. So that's gonna be immunity. Maybe this should be a bit less. Position y minus five, or sorry, maybe ten, like that. Um, let's get the title actually to get displayed like that. Maybe no, fuck it. This title is gonna be maybe like minus ten, like that. And we're gonna have the other text. It's gonna be called uh, immunity or sorry, amount. We're just gonna have the amount, and uh, let's just say that shit is gonna get parented to the bottom. It's gonna be at zero zero. You want to make a FPS game with levels in Unity, but I'm scared from the uh, from the space that it will need. How can I manage that? You mean like the storage, the amount of storage? Don't just don't be worried about that. Like there's nothing, there's not much you can do about that. I mean there is obviously, but uh, there's not much you can do. Yeah, so I wouldn't really be worried about the storage. Something's gonna need. Let's say zero zero here and increase that to twenty four. Now. We're gonna parent it to this and set that to there, right? So it's gonna have some kind of an immunity amount like that, and we're gonna make sure it. Um, right, that's good. That's good. That's good. Did Unity install it? No, I didn't. Okay, so we got this immunity, and uh, let's just make a player UI script, player UI, and we're gonna place that onto the player. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say you should be worried about the storage of the game. I think that's like the least amount or sorry not the least amount the, like the thing you should about thing you should worry about the least Like that's don't worry about that If it has five gigabytes, it has five gigabytes if it has 60 it has 60 There's thing you can things you can do to fix it, but I doubt there's gonna be so much shit that um, Your game is gonna be too large So yeah, don't worry about that of course, like you could just make better assets with less vertex and like better textures and shit like that, and that will fix it. But I doubt it's gonna be that large. So we're gonna have the player UI, um, and obviously we need to be using Unity Engine UI, and uh, we're gonna have a, po a couple of texts, and they're gonna be serialized for now. So private uh, text. That we're gonna have, or we just need a one. We need the immunity amount text and we're going to set it equal to now for now. And uh, we're going to have a private void um, update. Actually, that's going to be public. Fuck it. Public, uh, public void update immunity amount text, right? And it's going to be uh, pretty simple. Right, it's gonna be pretty simple. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna say immunity uh, amount text. We're gonna need a value here, uh, a float value, uh, current immunity. And you're gonna see why in a sec. Uh, immunity amount text that text is equal to uh, current immunity f uh, dot string, and we're just gonna make sure it displays the whole number like that. So that means whole number. Is space going to be a problem? That would mean you're making a 4K ray trace game made in Unreal Engine 4 for your phone game. Yeah, that's like the only problem. Don't worry about the, the storage it needs. Right, so this is pretty simple script, right? Uh, what we can do now is uh, go to the player motor, motor and it update. Or sorry, not the player motor, immunity. Uh, current immunity does minus, yeah. So when we decrease immunity, we're going to need a reference to our player UI script. So uh, I like to always space it out like this. So to have, let's have a region for um, variables, variables, and uh, we're just gonna end region here. And now you know we can just kind of close that under variables, and let's have a region for uh, references. 
and let's just real quick and region and we're gonna have a, a private um, player UI player UI um, UI like that and in start method we're just gonna say uh, We're gonna say, um, fuck it, wait. I wanna make this like good, good thing. So private void, let's say in it, uh, uh, in it uh, references. So initialize, says, uh, initialize references. We're just gonna say um, that the UI is equal to get component uh, player UI because they're on the same object. So that should be pretty simple. Uh, so if I'll have more references, I'll just be able to pop them in here and this will still look clean. So we're going to have in it, uh, references whenever we start and let's just make sure we, uh, organize this a bit better with the region built in, uh, methods, right? And uh, we're just going to say, end and region like that. And we can close in built in and now we can have a region for custom methods like that and we're just gonna end region like that pretty simple and it makes our script much more organized so yeah now when we decrease we're just gonna go ui dot uh, update immunity amount text and we're just gonna give it current immunity so now it should update the text over time um Yeah, I see a, maybe a small problem occurring with this, but we'll fix that later. I just want to see if this works for now. Uh, now, the only thing we do need to do uh, manually is to set the amount text here, which is pretty simple. Okay, thanks. I meant the storage. As long as I know the storage is very important in mobile, so I got scared. Uh, I'm new in game making and I'm basically 15, so forgive my inexperience. No, that's fine, dude. That's like questions everybody has. Just don't worry about it. There's much uh, more worrying things, you know, you should take a look at uh, my phone, okay? So let's just uh, wait for this. It's busy for some fucking reason. This installed, I was build support, good. Sorry you're late, you had a bath. That's nice, dude. Okay, and you can see our immunity going down um, as we, as we, you know, do shit. Good. What I want to do is, uh, like, this is a tip for you guys as well. So whenever you're working on a game, first thing you do for your graphics is find a good font. All right. So the way you can find it is just go to this website, uh, the font. And let me just zoom in for you guys. And what you can do is maybe go like cartoon. I don't know. And then click under more options. Click public domain and 100% free. And uh, submit. And now you'll find uh, fonts that are completely free and you can use for a game. Love to play. Hi, dude. Looks nice. Ooh, yeah, it does. Thanks. We can go. I was thinking something like this. Something like Arco. Um, I want a very friendly, cartoonish uh, font. That would work well. Let's see. Chubby Cheeks. That looks good. I think I'm going to go with that. Let me download it. And then you can just download it. Uh, you don't have to read it. I mean, we, we will. Uh, okay. I don't care. Uh, you can install the font, of course, if you want to. If you don't, you can just take this and drag it into Unity. And I'm going to just drag it into my assets. And now it will extract it. Oh, I can't find the file because I do have to extract it first. Okay. Uh, cancel. Good. Uh, let's extract this to desktop real quick. And then in our desktop, we can find the chubby font. I love the name though. I love the name. Yeah, good. And now we have like the fonts, folder fonts. Maybe I'll have more fonts. God knows. Yeah. And now uh, before you start creating some like crazy UI shit, uh, I recommend you start using the font as soon as possible because it will improve your game.
definitely. Look, that looks so much better. Although the cars, the colors are shit. Let's can we increase this third floor? Uh, rack overflow, overflow. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, vertical. I'll just do this manually, it's fine. <laughs> Among Us. <laughs> You're gay furry. That's good. That's good, Foxy or Drakeson. Dark Clown, yeah. We're not gonna use Among Us. And can you see my game? Yeah, it, it's pretty fucking simple. So you just enter and there's like immunity that goes down. And you're gonna be able to move and swipe, you know? And then uh, shit is gonna come out and there's some things you can pick up and some things you can't pick up because then you're gonna die. Pretty simple. Yeah, and once immunity reaches uh, zero, you die. Yeah. Oh, oh shit, we haven't clamped it. That's it. Um, okay, uh, let's go to immunity. And uh, in our custom methods, when we decrease immunity, we're gonna... We're gonna create another uh, private void for check uh, immunity, right? And this is simply gonna check uh, if immunity, if current immunity is less uh, or equal to zero, then um, fuck it, let's do more or equal to 100 or to max immunity. If it is, then uh, current immunity is equal to max immunity. So we just cap it at the max amount, pretty simple. And uh, here we're just gonna check if current immunity is less uh, or equal to zero. If it is, then we want to uh, set the current immunity equal to zero. And we wanna call some kind of a, a die method, I guess. And we're just gonna create a private void for die maybe, die, right? And we're just gonna call die here. Uh, pretty simple uh, and die we're just gonna say uh, debug dialog you died fuck you yeah <clears throat> there you go and when we whenever we decrease immunity here we're just gonna go check immunity like that so now we are we can clamp it and it's not gonna go uh, under zero Pretty simple thing to do. I've showed this a million times. <coughs> <coughs> oh, God damn it. No, Corona, don't kill me. Let's increase the decrease amount. See how this works. So our immunity is going to go down real quick right now. And it gets capped. You died. Fuck you. That's good. Okay. Um, let's real quick get a... Uh, I'm gonna get a 3D uh, or uh, wait, a image UI, and this is gonna be player, or we're just gonna call it HUD, right? And we're gonna stretch it uh, all over the fucking thing here. It's gonna be zero, zero, zero. We're gonna decrease the uh, opacity here, and we're gonna set the immunity under HUD. Fuck, and uh, we're gonna create another a UI image. Uh, if you are wondering how to stretch, you can just press Control and then this button right here, and it stretches everything. So that's nice. And then you just have to reset the uh, transform here, and it stretches it all over the screen. Also, another thing you need to do is change from constant pixel size on your canvas to a scale with screen size. And I don't know what a reference. How how big are, like, how big are, how big are what 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 are phone uh, resolution or ratios i'm not sure um screen is looking very badly according to the price what's more not everyone sticks the same 18 19 expiration or resolution samsung phones have an aspiration ratio of 18 5 to 9 which results in slightly different screen resolution apple on the other hand has a 5.8 inch display with an aspect ratio of 19 5 to 9. i don't even know what that means We're just gonna set like the what's 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 I don't know aspect uh, like 
Oh, okay, we can add aspect ratio. With what what did it say? What what's I, I closed it. iPhone has a uh, with an aspect ratio nineteen to five to nine. I don't know what that means. Do you guys know what that means? Um here. Mm, did I forget it actually? Nineteen to five. Okay. Uh, iOS. That does not make. Did I forget it again? Nineteen to five. Shit. I did nineteen to five. And it automatically changes to that. Okay, my bad. I think I do have to go to build settings and choose the iOS. Your friend from Czech is uh, a furry too. That's nice, dude. I'm glad. Mac Aries, what's up, dude? Hi. I played a bit of World of Warcraft lately, and I ran into some uh, Czech people. I helped them, you know, show where they need to go because they were new. That's pretty fun. Gotta stretch all the time. Oh. I pulled my hair. I think it means 19 is the height and the 9 is the width. Yeah, but uh, I think we're going to be able to do it once we switch the platform. Yeah. Ah, the problem is going to be the uh, asset management because uh, I, I really want the game to be like really small. It says here it means the height is 19.5 and 9 is the width. Oh, really? Oh, did it? Oh, yeah, 19.5. My bad. I read that as 19 and then like to 5 and to 9. My bad, my bad. Thanks so much, dude. You Google it. Thanks, it, sir. Thanks so much. Yeah, I'm stupid, and I need you guys to help me out. So, yeah. Thanks a lot. I almost ate you guys. Sorry. <laughs> so, in 1025, I must leave because I want to meet my furry friend and chat a bit with him. Dude, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. You gotta do what you gotta do. If I had a furry friend close by, I definitely wouldn't hang out with him. Because right now, I'm not sure if it's a joke or are you actually a furry. Which, like, it's fine with me. I don't care. But, like, it'd be nice to know. Ah, oh, there we go. We switched to iOS. Ah, it works. There we go. Ah, uh, we fixed it. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I never worked with this, so this is completely good to me. I love this shit. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to change the immunity here to transparent. And I know we can't see our text. Okay, I'm not stupid. We're just going to change the color to something else. Maybe like a nice darkish color. Where do we go completely green? Fuck it, no. Uh, is there any program that can test our game for performance or the bugs since I'm new and I'll scared a lot of bugs? Um, not pretty much not. I don't think I think like player testing is the best option. So just I don't know ask someone or you just play it about a million times. Why is my tongue yellow? Because I ate these and my tongue tends to Fucking dogs um my tongue they tends to like take color of food that it eats like all the time my tongue is like green or blue or yellow depending on what i ate i have a weird tongue yeah it's yellow from from this that's it hey maggie what's up maggie welcome back okay 
Yeah, I had to close the the shit because the dogs were doggies were uh, really loud. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we have immunity. We just want to create some kind of a death death screen. So this is gonna be the death screen. Yeah, death menu, death menu, death menu. Right. So how is this menu gonna look? I was thinking. There's a lot of shit we can do. Dogs MP3, yeah, that was pretty much it. Uh, there's a lot of shit we can do, and uh, first thing we're gonna have some kind of a little menu for uh, I don't know what menu background maybe menu background like that. Uh, we could have a few buttons for now. We're just gonna can I color pick this to that color? Yeah, good. This is gonna be our menu. And uh, whenever I work with shit like this, I like to do this. Yeah. So now we have this menu, and uh, we'll make it like width of the screen, and we can stretch it here. Can we stretch? Right. We're gonna make it um, maybe like 50 or fuck it, 20, 25 off of each edge. So it's in the middle, and the height is gonna be about 250. Too fucking large, 150. We're gonna have a few buttons in there. We're gonna have a UI button uh, for uh, replay, uh, replay um, main menu, and that should be fucking it. Let's have a button here, and we're gonna name this uh, button. What's this I'm making? I'm making a COVID mobile game. Yeah, uh, I'll actually tell you a really short story. So this is the player, it's gonna pan, and uh, you have immunity, which is probably at 100 when you start. It decreases over time, and there's masks and like vaccines that you can pick up that will increase your immunity, and there's like other people, dirty laundry, I guess, or something that you can pick up that will decrease your immunity. So yeah, something like that. Very simple game. Right, we're gonna have this button uh, that surprisingly I don't want the round uh, curve on it. So I'm just gonna go none here. So this button is gonna be a button. Mobile game based on COVID, yeah. That's pretty much it, that's pretty much it. Uh, we're gonna have the text here set to 24 with our new sexy chubby font. Oh shit! Med donated five, hey! Thank you, Med. Thank you so much, dude. How, what did I do to deserve, to deserve it? The, 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 deserve this. How, what did I do to deserve this? Holy shit. Somebody donated a dollar. Phoenix 3302. Thanks. Mwah, mwah. There you go. You guys, you guys got kisses. No homo though. No homo. Thanks so much, guys. What, what's happening? Why am I getting uh, donations? Like, I don't know. This is all so new to me. But thank you so much, again, thank you so fucking much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Why do I gotta be weird about it? I have this button and the height's gonna be about 40 maybe. Yeah, so we're gonna have this button. I don't know, 150 seems good. Um, let's uh, get a vertical layout group like that. Mm. Wait. How does this look? Padding. F fifty. Twenty. That seems good. From the top, we're gonna do fifty or twenty-five. Mm, yeah. So we're gonna have two buttons, and this is just a vertical layout group. Uh, if I like take buttons, it's gonna place them accordingly so now I can just simply have two buttons um, but the thing I do want to do is uh, go to make like a folder for prefabs and I do definitely suggest you guys always do this uh, create a folder for free for free pad pre free paths my English is good and we're gonna have just a basic button in there um, and then it will be much easier to change the look of the button once you uh, know what you want and uh, we're gonna have a main menu. Pretty simple. 
And then main menu is gonna have like uh, the shop or shit like that. A track two. Uh, this game will be about COVID. Yeah, not not dying from COVID and then eventually dying from COVID. Pretty simple. Yeah. Right. So we have restart the main menu. They do not have any function. But uh, what I wanted to do is uh, in our player UI. And yeah, look at this. I'm, uh, I started displaying my scripts on the side here and not on the top. Well, they're still on the top. But uh, yeah, I, I like this look a lot more. Uh, yeah, our player UI is gonna have a serialized field uh, image, private image. And it's gonna be a simple um, a HUD or a HUD. We're gonna call it HUD image. We're gonna call it HUD, men HUD menu. I guess HUD menu is a thing. Uh, we're gonna say that. Don't die to COVID, the game. Oh, Dressy Pops, what's up, my, my dude? Yeah, uh, something like that. Don't die to COVID, the game, real life, IRL, POV, everything. Uh, and we're gonna have a death menu equal to null. Yeah, now we set those, and I'll need a few functions. Well, let's uh, just be sure to say. I just want to organize this a bit. Don't mind me. Uh, custom methods. What do you guys say? I had an idea. I would buy myself a new keyboard, right? And I really wanted to get one of those really quiet keyboards because right now you guys can hear what I'm saying or what I'm typing. And it's really annoying me. So would you guys be uh, down for me to get a, uh, like a really quiet keyboard? Hey, Foxy dude. Thank you so much for joining. And say hi to your friend for me. And also, good luck. And I'll see you some other day. Okay, thank you so much. Bye-bye. And the region here. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, custom methods. And we're going to have a private build for show HUD. Yeah, yeah, I have another monitor up there. I don't know if you guys... Yeah, there you go. So this is my main one. This is where I look. This is my keyboard. It can change color. Look at that. Yeah, I like it on blue. And then I have a second TV here that shows up the chat there. Yeah. If you guys were interested into that. No, it's a good sound effect while I code. Okay, I can't, I can't really fight you on that. That, that is correct. That is correct. Uh, to be honest, I like keyboard sounds. You do? Okay, then. Okay, then. Mechanical keyboards, once you click, you can't turn back. Mine is not a mechanical. I, I did think it was mechanical once I bought it, but it isn't. But it does have that sound, but it doesn't have the feeling of the mechanical keyboard. Because I've tried some, and they're fucking amazing. This one doesn't have that uh, feeling, but it does have the sound. So, yeah. Maybe I'll just get a... Oh, what do you guys say? I get a louder keyboard. That would be better. Yeah. That'd be fucking better. So whenever we show the hood, we're gonna say HUD menu dot uh, set active or set all dirty. What the fuck is that? I don't know what that means, dude. But hmm, yeah, god damn it. Set active to uh, true, and we're gonna set the death menu. Just hard code the shit out of it. Hard code the shit out of it. Yeah, dude. We're gonna have another private void. Or show or show death menu yeah this is actually gonna have to be public I just remember right now so it's gonna be public and we're just gonna I don't know if you guessed this but what we're gonna do is uh, just do this and flip the switch yeah flip the switch yeah okay so we got these custom methods and I can close that and let me just get a region for a reference set and uh, and region there just so it's clean and I can look at it without dying nice you you who you like keyboard sounds yeah get a louder one that's okay I can what's the loudest keyboard we're gonna get that one <clears throat> 
my neighbors start complaining. Like, what the fuck you doing? Sounds like you drilling through a wall or something. That's that's the goal, okay? Mm, let's update. Our, okay, immunity here uh, in our die method. We do have the UI, okay. So whenever we die, we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna call UI dot uh, show that menu. Simple. And in our player UI, whenever we uh, we're gonna have to have a private void uh, start, and it's gonna be a show HUD menu. Yeah, show HUD. Uh, just so when we start, we automatically show the HUD. Yeah. That sounds good. And we're gonna just have a region for built in um, method, meth, meth, built in meth. <laughs> just kidding. And region. Yeah, okay. Clean. Clean. I can buy one with blue switches. Hell yeah, because my mouse is blue and my microphone is blue. Nothing else is blue, but yeah. Oh, I just realized now Med said no bullying whenever he donated eight minutes ago. No bullying. We do not support it here, but I will not stop bullying if I see. I'm just kidding. I will. Maybe. If I feel like it. <laughs> hey, you who just sub. Thanks, dude. Thanks so much. Welcome to the fam. Welcome to the fam. Right. Um, so in our player UI here, we just have to set the HUD there and the death menu. So now whenever we start, it's going to display the uh, HUD or like the immunity thing. And it's going to hide it once we die. So if we just wait, displays that and now you can restart that doesn't have a function yet but uh, we can we can die now now uh, let me just restart unity because I imported the iOS build actually no we I don't think I have to restart it that'd be stupid um, let's go edit uh, which press control B no uh, build settings uh, yeah, it's not saying I have a module here, so I'll just have to restart Unity if I want to start working with the controller. Uh, let's save that. So, yeah. Hells yeah, man. Uh, let's go into Unity Hub. And COVID Killer, current platform, it's going to be iOS. Yeah. And let's just open that. Let's eat another one of these. Cause I fucking oh did you did you just dab dude? What are you doing? What are you doing? So you peel these things off. It's a sexy sound. Oh sorry. I don't know if you guys heard that, but that was so satisfying. You just good. Yeah okay. This is good. Do you want? Do you guys want some ASMR? Now that you all came in in your pants, we can continue. Okay. So we were looking into this. Nice. So it does have some uh, things here. Device is held parallel to the ground. And the home button is the right hand. Remember the device acceleration axis to game coordinates. I don't know what you're doing there, but low low pass filter, good. I like much precision as possible when reading the accelerometer. accelerometer. What the fuck's accelerometer? <laughs> Did you really retract the message where you dabbed dude i mean okay but 
As the model death moves, a built-in accelerometer reports a linear acceleration changes along the three primary axes in three-dimensional space. Oh, so that's when like you move your phone. We don't need that. We don't need that. We just want swiping. Input manager. Mobile device input. Right. Um, I will need some kind of a swipe. First, I want to click, so I know when somebody clicked something. That'd be pretty fucking cool. Like you can click, click. Yeah. Okay. Um, or Unity phone swipe. A simple swipe and a tap. Okay. Uh, maybe you're interested in the script and swipe touch control for Android iOS. Why well, don't you know? I'm sure if it will be right for me, so I end up moving on to another publicity available script, which I found sample somewhere here on the forum that uses eight directions of movement. Well, I guess they take the the, you know, the side inputs as well. Anyway, I didn't write all of this, uh, and some found most of it. Another topic. Okay, let's see that topic then. This is the worst part of game development when you know when you don't know something, and you gotta you know, researched a bit. So this is really not interesting. Um, for mouse left click. Okay, uh, scroll in C sharp one. Uh, this one well, there you can add several touches by using a for each and loop through the input touches. Of course you can. Feel free to tweak a 0 0.5 number to get the right feel for how narrow you want to take the swipe. Okay, so we have a public void for uh, swipe and we have some vector tools, first press position, second press position, current swipe. Fine, I'm fine with that. So, you know, you see where, where you pressed and where the swipe is going. Pretty simple, I guess. Uh, okay, and then we have if input touches length is large zero. So if we touch something, we, we create a new variable touch. If uh, the touch dot phase is began so if we just clicked on it uh, save began touch to the point pretty simple uh, if a touch phase is equal to touch phase ended so if we stopped you know pressing it save and the touch to the point so we save where it ended create a vector from the two points so we uh, you know decrease or minus them or something and we normalize it swipe upwards we check if we swiped upwards, down, left, or right. That sounds pretty fucking amazing, if you ask me. Uh, so we're gonna have some kind of an input manager script that we're gonna use for this. So we're gonna have a input manager. We know what we're doing, right? Or you guys maybe know what I'm doing, but I don't. I don't know. Why is it so cold in here? Yo, yo, yo. <clears throat> okay, so we have an input manager. Okay, uh, obviously we need those vector tools. So they're gonna be private because we will be not doing anything with it. Where's some brackies, lol? Yeah, that will help. But I'm, I'm, um, I don't know. I found out that you know, learning by reading is much better than watching a video. For some reason, at least for me, I like it more when I have to read shit. I do look at videos quite often, but uh, that's just because I'm stupid. Private vector two. We're gonna have. What did he name them? He named them. Uh, first press position and second press. I'm gonna have just a one press, first press, pause, and we're gonna have a private vector to um, swipe, current swipe. Yes, I am copying from him. Fuck you guys. Vector 2.0. So this is just initialize them. So I don't have to create a function for initializing them. Um, will this do anything? No, 
but is it bad to do it? No, as well. Right, then uh, we're gonna need a public void for, uh, what did he name it? Swipe. Yeah, okay. Um, if input touches length, can I use that? If input, input that touches. It's working. Yeah, yeah, I remember you gaming spider. What's up? Welcome. Of course I remember you do, dude. So if, uh, if, uh, I'm gonna just comment this, comment a lot of shit here. If player touched the screen, pretty much that's what that means. Um, right. Uh, then we create a touch T, I guess touch is a variable that can be used and we input the get touch uh, and we get the zero touch because you know we only have one touch that we want to get pretty simple um, right and what he does here is check if it began if it began we want the initial position so later we can calculate how much he swept okay so uh, we're just gonna get uh, like Initial initial position, and uh, we're gonna get the uh, get uh, ending position, and we need to check uh, check where the player swiped. Check if the player swiped. Check if the player swiped. Uh, and check where the player swiped. Yeah, so that's basically what we gotta do. So uh, here we check if uh, t dot phase or sorry t dot phase is equal to phase touch phase dot began. If it did, uh, we're just gonna actually I'll I'll comment the shit out of this just so you guys maybe understand it better so if the touch phase began so if we just pressed here uh, we want to save that into the initial position so we can say first press pause is equal to uh, t dot position is that how he did it oh he created a new uh, vector 3 but I'm pretty sure this is also a vector or sorry a vector 2 I'm pretty sure this is a vector 2 yeah I think we can save it like this but uh, just for the purpose of not being stupid because we're working with this for the first time I'm gonna do it the way he did it so just create a new one nt.position.y right so we just save that uh, save or set the initial uh, position of the touch there we go right so we save that and here automatically he checks if uh, the phase is equal to touch phase dot ended so if we stopped uh, touching the screen set our sorry if we did stop then we uh, oh okay We're gonna need, yeah, we're gonna need another one. Private vector two, uh, first press and pause. I think he, I think he fucked up with the naming convention there because he named them the first press position and second press. Well, you can see here uh, in the second press, he saves the ending position. So that just doesn't make sense to me. I think that's just bad, bad um, thing to do so yeah that's why we had why well, I was confused a bit uh, so first press and position is equal to new vector 2 and we're gonna save the same thing again like that so we are gonna uh, get the uh, get the get ending position and here we're gonna set the ending position 
of the touch. Yeah, why am I commenting all of this? I, I got no clue, dude. I got no clue. Oh, this shit is fucked up. Doesn't matter. Can I maybe not do that now? Right. And what he does here is uh, creates the vector from the two points. So like if you if you touch a screen, like maybe here, I don't know if you guys can see that. I don't know, if you touch the screen here, that's quite hard to see. Let me show you here. Okay, compile that shit. So if you touch the screen here and you get the first position and then you swipe it here and it ends here, okay? So you got this point and this point and then you can uh, get how long the uh, swipe was and to check even if it was a swipe. It is a swipe most of the times because you at least move your finger this much. So yeah. Uh, yeah, so you want to get the size of the swipe. Or right, that's I think what he's doing. I'm pretty sure that's what he's doing. Yeah, so he uh, does the second press X minus the first press X and second press Y, that second press or first press Y. Yeah. And then he normalizes it so it's not like weird numbers. It's uh, zero to one, basically. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. That's what we're going to do. Uh, and he does it uh, in the ending if statement. So that's what you want to do. Hello. Um, current swipe. We're going to set that equal to um, a new vector 2. Now we do have to use a new vector 2. Can you guys hear that? It's a fucking PC. <laughs> I think you guys can hear it. Uh, we're gonna say it's equal to a uh, T, or sorry, not T, uh, but uh, we'll get the second, or sorry, not second, first press end position. So where we ended, we're gonna say minus the first position and we're gonna get the length of the swipe minus or sorry dot x minus uh, first press pos dot x so we now we get the x uh, and we're gonna say first uh, press first 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 press and pos dot y minus first uh, press pos dot y right so now we get the swipe current swipe I think that's how he said it as well yeah and uh, what we can do is say current swipe dot normalize. Normalize, yeah, normalize, not normalize, normalize, like that, right? And here we're just gonna set uh, get or uh, calculate. Was that version that a version of you but without long hair? Yeah, that's my twin brother. That's him. He's uglier, okay? He's the uglier one. <laughs> calculate what? What? Calculate the swipe length. Duh. Yeah, okay. Right. <clears throat> and uh, we're just gonna. Sorry, not that. Wow, wow. I'm very stupid. Uh, we're gonna say um, normalize that's why right and we can do that and now we got the ending position here we can delete that check if the player swiped we did that or we did not do that but we're not gonna have to do that um, check where the player swiped that's what we're gonna do now or check the check the direction of the swipe right and uh, in this case I just want the left and right swipe uh, like up and down is not gonna do shit for me so yeah, uh, check the direction of the swipe. And uh, the way he checks it is I'm guessing if the X is less than a zero, current Y is less or is more than zero and 0 0.5 and current swipe is, what the fuck is happening here? Okay. Okay, so
so we're gonna check if or uh, let's just say uh, let's say check a left swipe right and what we can do um, is say if current swipe current swipe dot y is less than zero so the y is the up and down so we don't want any movement up and down on the swipe right so we're just gonna say left and right that's why we're saying that uh, we want to say if current swipe and and um, current swipe dot y wait what now this is confusing me because y is up and down right and the x is left and right okay let's just do it his way say x i don't know why x oh my bad okay i was kind of confused so if x is less than zero since we normalized it zero is where we uh is uh the well zero is the middle of the screen and if it's less than zero then that means we swiped left okay and if we swipe right x is bigger than zero okay Hey, Scout main YouTube algorithm brought you here again. That's nice, dude. I'll th I'll be sure to thank YouTube later. 100%. Uh, and we check if the current swipe dot y is uh, bigger than 0 Or I need the or uh, I don't know how to write you guys does somebody know C sharp or operator Do you guys know how to write this shit this shit right here with the two kind of like this or do you, Does anybody know how to write this? thing here Little bro 10 what's up, dude, you're back after a year and a bit. It's been a year already. I remember you, of course, but like it's been a year. God damn. I mean, I remember the name at least. That y is bigger than or uh, less than 0 0.5. Minus 0 0.5, it should be right. Minus 0 0.5 is bigger than. Yeah, it's bigger than minus 0 0.5. Okay. That means uh, what he does here is wait. Is that uh, that that work? Okay, so what he checks here on fire. How did you write that? Which shortcut is that on fire? Which shortcut is that? Mates doesn't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I don't know if you remember me, but I was in very, I was in every. Yeah, I remember you, dude. Of course I do. I'll probably remember all of you guys till the rest of my life. <laughs> like in fifty years, I'll see a name like Mates, and I'll be like, whoa, like a flash in my eyes, like holy shit. I think so. I remember you, yeah. Ages to survive when I was streaming that still. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, yeah, so this checks if that Y, so up and down. Uh, we're obviously, not everybody is going to swipe exactly on the X axis. You're going to swipe like on the side a bit, maybe, you know? And uh, we're just checking how much up that was, okay? So that that should work, and we're just gonna debug dot log uh, left left swipe, and we have to do the same thing for the uh, check or for the right swipe. Check a uh, right swipe. If current swipe dot x is bigger than zero, so if we swipe right, and and um, current swipe dot y is bigger than minus zero point five minus 0 0.5 or current swipe dot y is bigger or is less than 0 0.5 what about ATS it's still it's still in development I'm, I'm figuring shit out okay 
I got a really good first person controller going and uh, the rest is still a mystery but you guys will know when it's back okay um, so we do that in uh, swipe now how does he call it let me check uh, so this is his uh, like input and this is our for mouse left click when you were making a tank last stream, you helped a lot with my transform problem. The stream ended before I could say thanks, so thank you very much. Oh, that was you. Yeah, 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 yeah. The the applying the scale and shit. Yeah, no problem. There's a video of mine where you can check out, like, Blender to Unity. It's a really good video. So you can check that out. But no problem. I'm here to help. Uh, the, okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, so now we can just check for the swipe each frame I'm pretty sure and he made it here so it works with uh, the input of the mouse so I should probably do that first uh, if input get mouse button down zero zero so we get down and we get up pretty much uh, so we're just gonna uh, yeah, so I'm just gonna zero this out, or I'm just gonna hide that for now, right? Uh, so this is what you, we would use with a touch, okay? Um, I cannot zero that out. I can. Wait, let me check. Okay, like that. So this is the like the the code for the phone, but since we're still in development, I would like that to be not here. Uh, let's do that and delete this, and we'll do this, and we're gonna place it there. Public swipe, public void swipe. Yeah, okay. So like that's the main thing. Fuck, wait, I'm confused, I hate this. Why is this there? Like, there should be a touch here, but there isn't. So this is what we need to do. And let's just do that and do this. All right, so I don't know why I can't close it here. Why is it not foldable? Oh shit. How to get better at hand-drawn UVs? Just draw, that's it. First game, seven, nine, seven part of age, dude, that was so long ago. That was so long ago. Omer, is it 2D? Uh, it's actually 3D, but it's top down, so it kind of looks 2D. Not really. It's 3D. It'll be 3D models and shit. Uh, where is my preference? Uh, I think it's in tools, customize, options. Uh, account, out, recovery, document, extension, find, and replace, fonts, and colors, input, open, blah, blah, internal settings, project and solutions, general, allow, build and run, location, performance, uh, I don't know where that is, tools for unity, there's actually that, general, that's cool, okay, never mind, uh, we cannot, I don't know what's, Visual Studio Enable Folding Code. I just came into two D. Try downloading the game and try you can enable disable code folding with editor folding settings. You're not helping. Editor folding. I don't know where the fuck. What? Text editor. Uh, in general, uh, enable enable view white spaces. This menu for a key advanced. Maybe show difference over the margin. Use like a classification. Uh, it's not here. File extension. All languages. Basic. Fuck it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What we're going to do is we're just going to take this and uh, do it the old school way. Go to our game here. And 
there we go we have it saved so now we can just uh, undo this oh now it works did you guys see that this shit it works why does it work now huh it's interesting but now it won't work right what's happening here dude Man, what the fuck's happening? I want to fold the code. You see, this kind of shit that bothers me. Fuck it, uh, fuck it. But now I will uh, look at that. I can now fold it, dude. Man, this is so stupid. Uh, we're gonna do this the uh, for the PC and get the mouse button down uh, so whenever we press the uh, button it's gonna set the initial position uh, and here uh, this we don't need right here so that's pretty much useless for me uh, we're gonna have to delete one of these bad boys right here and we're gonna check if uh get if input dot get mouse button down so if we press the button and here is where we input dot get mouse button up yeah i know uh, region and region but i didn't want to do it that way it's fine i copied it there and we're gonna save it and that's it so we're gonna get the uh, mouse. I'm pretty sure we can get mouse dot position input dot uh, mouse dot mouse position dot x. Can we do that? Does is that what he does? I'm pretty sure that's what he does. Yeah, input dot mouse position. Yeah. Okay. 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 We can do it that way. Uh, let's just do this and do this dot y like that and like that and I'm pretty sure that's all we have to do okay oh, good morning good morning good morning okay so now it should work if we actually call the swipe method where am I going to call it or who are you going to call Ghostbusters? Um, fuck it. Yeah. Let's organize this as well. So region, um, this is variables and we're going to have and region for, um, watch it. we're going to have uh, a region for custom methods. Oh, this is uh, too small for you guys. So let me just do that. Uh, region and end region. My bad. So we have the custom methods and we're gonna have the built-in methods. So we're gonna have a region for built-in methods. Me built-in methods and end region. And here we're gonna Let's just do a private void update for now, and we're gonna have to uh, optimize this a bit better. So we're just gonna call swipe. Yeah, okay. So now it should work if we put the input manager onto the player. Finally, after about half an hour of doing that shit, or maybe even an hour, God knows how long it was. Um, input manager. Let's check. Okay. So keep in mind in here, Oh, okay, okay, we got a bug, of course. Um, let's just set this so we have more time to test. Okay, so you can see the problem here. Swipe right, and it triggers both of them. Why is it triggering both of them? God knows. We're gonna figure out, though. 
like that and let's get to our custom method so uh, we call these debugs whenever this shit is called oh this is this shouldn't be or this should be and now it should work I think so, at least. Yeah, right swipe, left swipe, right swipe. You can see it piling up here. Oh, you guys can't see that? Oh, my bad. Uh, I don't think... Uh, let's turn off collapse. So, right swipe. You can see. And then left swipe. So, we have swiping in, in it. That's good. Okay. So that works. That's great. Oh no. Yeah, oh no. But we fixed it. It's good. Where am I from? Unstoppable Shredder. I'm from Croatia. That's a country, yeah. Um, so in here, we're obviously going to want to implement some kind of movement. So whenever we swipe left or right, uh, we're going to want to move. Now, in our player motor, we're going to create a function for actually moving, right? Yeah, uh, we're going to have to create a... Uh, fuck it, let's organize this as well. I'm super into it. Um, this is going to be references and uh, end region, end region, like that. And we're going to have a region for built in methods right uh and end region good 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 that's very good okay and we're gonna have of course a region for uh custom methods right and and that region good so the method we're gonna uh two methods actually we're gonna have a public void for move right a move or right yeah move right and we're gonna have a public void move move uh, left. Two very simple things. We're gonna get our controller. We're gonna push him left or right. Do I use patterns like singleton? I do use singleton sometimes. Um, I tried. I try to um, not use them, but I do use some singleton sometimes. You know, whenever I need to get a variable uh, that's on something else or it's hard to be found, uh, just to save performance, I sometimes do use it. Um, right, so whenever we move right, um, we're going to need a few variables here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, region uh, variables and, and region, like that. So we're going to have a, uh, these are going to be private our serialized, serialized field private so we can see them in the inspector we're gonna have a private um, a vector 2 actually it can be a vector 2 but let's go with vector 3 uh, move direction same as always we're just gonna set it to vector 3.0 um, right and uh, okay good uh, we're gonna need a private vector three private float uh, move amount and let's just for now set it maybe to like five let's say good and that's the amount we're gonna move for so we got the variables it is the same thing but inverse yeah 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 basically so whenever we move right, we're gonna take our um, uh, we're gonna take our move direction, move direction, right, and we're gonna set it equal to a new vector three. That's gonna be uh, we're gonna be moving the x axis, so the x axis is gonna be move amount, and uh, the rest is just gonna be zero, right? Pretty simple, and. Uh, for the move left, we're just gonna say minus move amount. Pretty simple as well. Um, now, we do have to go to the controller each time and say move. 
or hmm, we could actually just do something like this we could in uh, create a built-in method or not create a built-in method it's already created that's why it's a built-in method uh, we could just go controller dot move and fit it the, the move direction so at the end of each frame we're gonna move it right and these are not gonna get called here uh, so the player motor is gonna need to be accessed here so we're gonna need a uh, region for um, references and end region right and what we're gonna do here we're gonna have a player motor motor um, and in our do we have the initialize here we don't oh fuck it let's create a private void uh, in it um, a references and in here we're just gonna say motor is equal to a get component uh, get get component uh, player motor All right uh, and now we can just call that in our built-in method right here uh, or sorry we do not actually have a start method in here so let's just do a private void start and call the init references like that good now we have that and in our custom method we just have to call it uh, instead of debugging we're just gonna go motor dot uh, move uh, left like that and here we're gonna say motor dot move right like that good right so that's how I would do it and let's see if that works uh, you will just have to make one code and change the variable I think yeah yeah do you know what it uh, is the difference between 0f and 00f no difference I don't think there is I mean one's an int and one no both are float actually I don't think there's a difference or like maybe not a big difference okay you can see that it did move him for five It's not working anymore so five's too much okay five's too much because the player motor we're just gonna move one. Oh, why is uh okay oh i see i see i see okay so in our player motor uh whenever we uh move right or left we set it to that but we do not reset it back so uh, i'm thinking if you use get component use require component that is a good point though that is a good point um uh, require component type of character controller that's a good point thanks i always forget to do that but it never not works nothing here input manager player motor require component type of um player motor yeah good and immunity does not have any good references it does uh player um, require component type of um player ui there we go thanks for that i was uh forget to do that for some reason All right so we need a way of just resetting that and uh, I think the easiest way is at the start of each frame mm, yeah. the start of let's see what happens here so move direction uh, sorry move direction is equal to uh, vector 3.0 for vector 3.0 that works okay so uh, I have an idea but maybe we'll have to use late update what the what do you mean little bro what's bothering you you mean I created one function only yeah it's not gonna work because um, get set to zero automatically so what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna use update here uh, and 
let me see would that work uh, unity late update uh, let that is called after the update function have been called okay so yeah that's how we're gonna do it so we're gonna have uh, our first update set that to zero and then we're gonna move it in the actual uh, private void late update right so this is first gonna get set and also what we have to do is in our um, player input manager uh, the swipe or sorry this swipe hmm. where do we call swipe we call swipe in our update and we need to call the swipe into late, late update good what's the required component it means it won't work if that component is not uh, on the object with it so in my uh, like in my immunity i need a player ui component to run the script and if i don't have it it will not run it therefore it will give no errors i think basically that's it Oh, you can see it's working. So now we can swipe and move. <laughs> That's cool. Uh, so one is too little, right? So our player motor maybe 2.5 because five, I think was too much. Uh, let's go with 3.5, see how that looks. Okay, that's obviously not what we want. Fuck, let's set that 3.5. Yeah, 3.5 works. Uh, what is this? Ah, like I write it when it changed the background to blue and did not know what happened because it was weird as fuck. Really attach component to object when attached to script. Oh, that's what it does. Okay. Well, same thing. Oh, you're going uh, with it? Little like Reddit. It changed the background to blue and no, no. Well, uh, when it did that, you could see the position of the player increasing on the x-axis. That's how I knew. And this move direction shouldn't really be seen here. So let's just um, not show that. We'll just not show that um, variable. So here it's going to just be a private variable like that. Okay. Uh, okay, so now we can uh, move the character of some sorts and yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean, what do I swipe? The background? No, 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 I, I move the player for that amount to the left or right. And the swiping is uh, because I, I set the build mode to... Uh, to iOS and that's like when you would swipe on a phone that's basically what I'm doing with the mouse so I'm just swiping the mouse I'm not moving anything I'm just getting the start point and the end point and then calculate the swipe of the mouse because that's gonna be done with the finger on the phone so I'm not swiping anything in the scene I mean I am the player I'm moving the player but when I do the swipe I'm actually swiping the uh, the screen let's say it like that so just getting the swipe input to see which direction I'm swiping. Good. Okay. So we got pretty much everything we need. Right? So like when immunity reaches zero, let's let's get these buttons working, alright? We need the restart restart function that's gonna be in our player UI, of course. Um, yeah, custom function, we're gonna just Nah, fuck it. We're gonna create a new script. Fuck that shit. Uh, we're gonna have a, a menu uh, methods. Me menu methods. Open that shit up. And, oh, that's not it. Good. So, in menu methods, we're gonna be using um, Unity Engine. I don't think we'll need it, but let's just say we will. We'll need. Mm, we'll need. Uh, region for custom methods methods and region like that uh, all right so custom methods we're gonna have a public void for um, 
return to main menu and we're gonna have a public oh shit we're gonna have a public void for a restart restart game right so um whenever we restart the game i just want to reload the scene uh so i think i'll need scene manager using a scene manager or what was it unity engine the scene management yeah uh, so i'll need the scene manager dot uh load scene and we're gonna load scene uh in scene scene build index that zero and uh because that's the only scene we have uh, can i show how i made the swipe and yeah i'm yeah that's exactly a little bro uh what i'm doing uh, i do not uh, refer well i do i do let me show you uh, so this is the input manager it has the swipe code in it uh, here so this is the swipe um, yeah so basically what I do is get the initial position so when I press the button button down uh, I get that and I also get whenever I press the button up or when I stop holding the button so whenever I press it down I get the position of the pressed down position and whenever I get it up, I get the position of where that happened. And then I calculate the uh, current swipe by uh, decreasing this the end position with the first press. And then I normalize it, check if the check the direction of the swipe, and that's pretty much it. Load scene as sync. I don't know what that is. I do not know what that is. So yeah, that's basically how I'm swiping. Uh, I could show you, so I could send you the link to where I found the code here. So, uh, wait, I cannot send you that. Let me just go to YouTube, uh, YouTube, and I should be right here. Oh, I gotta like my own video, guys. Make sure you like it. There you go, that's the code of the swipe. Why not help it? Yeah, okay. There you go. Uh, okay, so uh, somebody you uh, better use load scene as sync. I don't know what that is. First time hearing load scene as sync. What does it do? What's different with it? Async operator use the async operation through when the version has completed. Loads the scene. Can provide the full scene path, the patch on the build setting window, or just the scene name. If you only provide the scene name, you can load the first scene in the list that matches. If you multiple scene with the same name, so example of support of formats. Okay, scene name input in case sensitive. Wait. So it loads it in the background, right? So it's not the black screen just while well, it loads. Uh, from my small amount of it should work on the new load level async also choose for the whole loading time or at a certain point for us oh okay yeah I, I could use that thanks so much I don't know that that, that function existed uh, many methods uh, load scene as sync okay. that's it yeah so we can just zero I took it from the internet exactly that's what you gotta do no problem dude I mean, it's there. I just showed you where it is. Uh, and whenever we return to main menu, we're gonna have some load scene async, and we're gonna load a different scene. Now I know if we press that button, it's not gonna work. It's gonna give us an error. But for now, uh, we just have some kind of a method there for that. So in our death menu uh, here, our buttons are gonna need a, a function to run. So both of the buttons, um, we're gonna have a on click here. Yeah, so yeah, it, it does it in the background first. To yeah, okay, I can I can live with that. That 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 would be actually quite cool to have. Uh, so here we're gonna have the menu methods, right? And we need the object with the menu methods. So our canvas is gonna have the menu methods right so now we can here get our canvas 
and we can call the menu methods by uh, in the first one we're gonna restart the game sorry not that uh, menu methods restart game and here we're gonna call return to main menu return to main menu there we go you use async for load screen yeah yeah that's I think I think that's uh, I didn't know about that but thank you guys for telling me let's see so if we die and our player here let's go to immunity and set the immunity decrease rate to 20 oh look we're dying so quickly right if we restart it restarts the scene did you die fuck you um, but the shit doesn't seem to work anymore the player shit this works player motor doesn't We're, we're gonna take care, care of that later, okay? Um, okay, so when we die, where's our death? Custom methods, die. We're just gonna stop debugging that shit. It's annoying, good. All right, so now uh, we need to move it kind of, we have to move the player. So, which means we always have to uh, be adding something to our character controller which is gonna be quite hard so in our player mode it's actually gonna be super simple uh, we're gonna have the uh, custom method for move forward I guess yeah so we're gonna have a method here let's say public void it could be private even private void move forward and basically what we do is we set Mm, I see what's happening here. I see what's happening here. Uh, well, okay. So we can say move direction is equal to a new vector three. Uh, that's gonna be equal to on the x axis. We're just gonna say move direction dot x. And here uh, on the y axis we want just zero. And on the y axis we're gonna have a new variable called. Uh, well, this is gonna be. Uh, move amount side and we're gonna have a serialized field uh, private float for move amount front and that's gonna be five as well this is 3.5 right there okay so now we have a new variable and we're gonna move it for that amount yeah uh, yeah okay uh, move amount front like that okay so now we just add the move forward and uh, in our built-in methods we're just gonna in late update and we, we can call it here even we can call it here um, it will work it will work uh, move forward it will work it should work I don't see a reason why it wouldn't so currently I think we're just gonna fall off the whoa errors selection field that's serious serialize okay okay let's see uh, we should fall off the, the plane real quick very quick just because I forgot to uh, multiply it by multiply by time dot dot the time yeah so it was real quick uh, yeah because I did it 60 times per second now it's gonna do it once every second oh there we go we're moving and we're off the plane. I think that might be actually, well, we're gonna increase that later, yeah. So now we're actually moving. Uh, what I do need to do is create a more, um, I need to load the scene a bit better. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have, we're gonna create a prefab. 
we're gonna create a prefab all right uh this is gonna be a folder for i don't know um, the, the, the prefab for what scene uh nah, it's prefab for uh modules i guess modules okay and each module is gonna be different for now we're just gonna have the plane so this is gonna be a module and uh, what we're gonna do is uh create some generation of the infinite world uh each module is gonna have a uh some kind of a it's gonna have some kind of a collider a different one a box collider right it's gonna have a box collider actually no it's not it it, it is not gonna have it we're gonna create a um empty empty object called collider middle collider right um and this is gonna have a box collider right and if you take a look at it uh you can see where it is now we're gonna just uh size set that to five or ten maybe i don't know what the size is yeah ten uh so the z size is gonna be 0 0.5 maybe or 0 0.25 it's not really important so um what we're gonna do is we're gonna check whenever the player goes through this uh whenever the player goes through this we're gonna spawn a new object in front and we're gonna delete the object behind so at all times we should have only two or three uh the of these planes spawned all right it's gonna be completely random i think i like how that will work yeah okay um right uh, we're gonna need a uh, new script for a uh, c-sharp script what's it gonna be named it's gonna be named um, uh, generator or scene generator right okay uh, we're we, we have our scene generator and I've never done this before, so this should be interesting. Uh, first, we'll need a array, a uh, private uh, array of game objects. And this is where we're gonna hold all of our modules, modules, like that. Eh, it's gonna be a list, it's gonna be a list. It's, and it's gonna be public, or serialized at least. Private uh, list, of, list of game objects. And we're gonna call them modules. All right, okay, so we're gonna have a list of modules um, and in our start method We're gonna just spawn uh, Private void spawn Start module right and uh, we're gonna make sure that that's done at awake actually right so it's done before the start uh, We're gonna instantiate a uh, module zero or random that range of zero to whatever the uh, modules length is uh, or module account right uh, we're gonna instantiate that and it's gonna instantiate the middle of the scene. So that's good mm, Okay, we might w this will be a bit harder than I thought but okay, so basically we take the random range of the We just get a basic Random here, which will get a random module later when we have maybe like five modules It's gonna look cool when they're like kind of different each one is different. So that's gonna be pretty cool but for now we only have one so it's gonna spawn only one and this should be in here and then we can call spawn spawn start module okay uh that should work and it should spawn the first one okay mm. now well, bless you <clears throat> Okay, we'll need to do some other shit here. I'm sorry I have to go now because of home. Oh, good luck, dude. Thank you for joining. Good luck and thank you for joining. Mm. 
Uh, we're gonna need some kind of a game manager. And thanks for the help. You helped here, so that's good. A game manager. It's gonna have the uh, generator, scene generator, right? And the list is empty for now, but we're gonna give it the uh, module here, right? So it can spawn that. There's a naked person behind me. Move. Oops. <laughs> right. So uh, we're going to delete this module for now. Uh, actually, fuck it. We're not. Uh, we're going to just say prefabs modules. And this is going to be module that we're going to save like that. Okay. And now it should spawn the module whenever we start. Yeah. A Leon Corleone, what's up? Right, you probably need to sign module variables because there is zero of them. Okay, there we go. Oh, it spawned it, and if I'm not mistaken, we should be moving and falling off it. So, yeah, so it spawned one. That's good. Now, what we're gonna do is whenever we collide with uh, this collider in the middle we're gonna spawn the pre the one in front and we're gonna spawn the one in the back that was tough yeah he's the boss fight mm, sure do sure of course um, right so the middle collider we'll need uh, the functions in here or not we're, yeah we'll take the uh, uh, we're gonna have a few functions here we're gonna have a private void uh, generate uh, more generate scene uh, generate um, new module and in here we're gonna we're gonna spawn a new one uh, spawn new module uh, delete old module right Okay. Okay, I'll be right back. I have to go pee and uh, you know, then we'll continue. I really have to pee. Be right back. I'm back. Went to pee, came back, didn't wash my hands. That's good. Okay, so uh, we're gonna need some kind of a way um, of, you know, signing modules. Right, uh, we're gonna need another. Uh, let's serialize it for now. Private uh, game object array. This one's gonna be an array uh, of this called current modules. We're gonna make sure that the current module, the one we're standing on right now, is always the zero one. The first one is gonna be the old one, and the second one is the new one. Yeah, that's not gonna work. I have an idea. Uh, we're gonna use an array. We could use an array, but let's not. We're gonna need a private uh, game object. Uh, it's gonna be called new module. We're gonna have private game object uh, current module. Let's create up another game object for um, old module. Yeah, that that looks good. That looks good. 
Uh, I'm not sure how I'm gonna make this, but I really want this to work, and I think I have an idea in my head. So, uh, when we pass the we, when we pass through the um, glider, what we want to do is spawn a new one. We want to spawn a new one, yeah. Rose Zebra, what's up, dude? Um. Uh, spawn new module, spawn new module. Ah! Oh, fucking door. Yeah, he's I'm sorry, everybody home, so it's a clusterfuck here. Uh, spawn new module, so we're gonna instantiate. Uh, spawn module. We're gonna spawn. This we're gonna rename to spawn. Uh, spawn module. We're just gonna do that, and we're gonna call spawn module in here. Now it's gonna. We'll have to do a bit of a system with this. So uh, what we'll have to do is uh, create a. I'm good. I'm doing great, dude. How you doing? How you doing? I'm doing amazing. We're making a game, so that's really good. Uh, so, right, we're gonna have a empty object. This is actually gonna be the module, right? And this is the module uh, mesh. Mesh data or something. Module mesh meshes or something. And this is the module middle collider, right? And this, uh, we're gonna set that to zero. And let's just set the module meshes to zero for now, right? Whenever we spawn a new thing, if we spawn the um, new module maybe here, okay, let me show you. So if we spawn the new module, the half of it is gonna clip through this one. So what we need to do is uh, make sure the spawn point of the new module is this point right here. A uh, very simple way you can do that is uh, by just uh, moving the inside of it here. Right, so that will be like 25, right? Right, so now whenever you spawn it, it's gonna spawn this, right? And each module is gonna have a spawn point, I think. Yeah, it's going to. Um, each mod making game is the best. Yeah, dude, yeah. Um, each one of these is gonna have a empty object. Uh, next module spawn point right and that module is gonna be on the complete other end which is 50 right or 50 of his I guess yeah so now new modules are gonna get spawned with this origin point there so it will actually work yeah it should okay uh, now what do what we need is some kind of a script that will allow us to do that uh, so we'll need a C# -sharp script called module, and I I know I'm not organizing my shit. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, stretch. <sighs> Back starting to hurt. Can't go too long. Right. So we'll need a module which will be. Uh, we'll have a couple of variables. We'll have a couple of fucking fucking public variables. We'll have a uh, public um, next module uh, spawn point, and we're gonna have that's a game object, yes, game object next module spawn point. You mean pooling objects? I've never done that before. Let me see. Uh, too much for and lower the burden that is placed on the CPU when having to rapidly create and destroy object. It is a good practice in design pen to keep in mind to help relieve the processor power of the CPU to handle more important tasks and not become inunity by repetitive create and destroy calls and destroy learn to object pooling. Oh shit. I thank you, dude. Kershaw, thank you. Okay, we could implement this. We could implement this. Okay. 
create an object pulling script, create a new script called object pull, attach a script to a game controller. Okay, we will do that. Thank you so much. We will use object pulling. I never used it before, never needed it, but uh, now it seems like a good idea. Now, uh, I just want to check if this works. Actually, fuck it, we'll go with object pulling. Um, so it has a shared instance of the object pool and then has a list of game objects, pool objects. Game object, object to pool, uh, amount to pool. Okay, shared instance equals to this, of course. A pooled objects is equal to a new list of game objects. Game objects, temporary. Temporary for each uh, item in amount to pool. We're gonna say I plus plus. Temporary is equal to instantiate uh, the to the instantiated object temporary that select false pulled objects that add temporary so it's basically preloading them right cachet cachet isn't that a sh the the w with the little tail cachet cachet uh I mean, yeah, it would be Koshche. I'm not sure. It's not my name. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I, I haven't re learned Russian in a year. So, yeah, not sure. So, basically, it preloads the objects whenever the game starts. And then it uh, loads. I mean, it loads them when the game starts. And then it has. I see, I see, I see. Even higher return pulled object. If it's not active, okay. I'm going to script and instantiate the bullets. Here you want to replace any code and the bullets. Yes, yes, okay. Okay, good. Game object bullet object uh, pull. Shed. Okay, he's using it for bullets. So he preloads a bunch of bullets because I saw it's a shooter game. So he preloads a bunch of bullets and then shoots them like that. That's good. Destroy game object and game object set false. I see, I see, I see, I see. Uh, yeah, pool uses use preload resources. Yeah. Running the project. Um, okay. I think I could get behind this. Uh, I'm just thinking, like, obviously, I, I, uh, the player might die in five seconds or the player might die in two minutes. So how am I going to know how much objects I need to pull? Uh, the only thing that makes sense to me is to pull five objects and after those five objects are used. Oh no. Because I can reuse them, right? I can just reset the position of them. Okay. <laughs> now this led me to an even crazier idea. I don't know. Maybe that's, that is the point. Uh, so... What if, what if, what I do is load two instances of each of the modules when the game starts and then I just move their position because two of them is enough for each, well three of them, yeah, three of them would be enough. But who would keep track of that dude, what the fuck? Okay, okay, I have an idea, but I have to get this system working first and then we can optimize it later. But pooling, definitely, I think we have to do. Just place the creative modules back once they reach far enough. But yeah, that's that's not what I want. I want them, want them to be random, so like you will get quite chopped up. I don't know. I, I have something in my head that I want to try, with, which would be that optimized. But one sec, I have to get this working. So each module is going to have an X uh, module spawn point. So we're just going to save this as a module right there. Uh, yeah. Okay, not like that. Oh, because that's already a prefab. Uh, okay. Uh, 
let's return that uh, module module uh, restore like that okay so now it's good um, we're just gonna unpack this prefab unpack right so this we're gonna use like that so we're gonna delete that and we're gonna delete that and now this we're gonna use as a module right and uh, each module is gonna have a module component that's gonna do shit and next spawn point would be this object which again each module is gonna have so your English better you can no 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 I got I got what you need uh, I got what you wanted me to do like I get I get what you're trying to say and I think that's a great idea so preload the uh, resources and then use them and that should improve the performance magically by a billion percent which does make sense right so uh whenever we touch this fucking collider uh do we have a script for that mm, we have scene generator which yeah we have to take care of that so spawn module instantiates the module at a random range okay okay Okay, 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 okay. We need to get the current module, which when we spawn it, that will be set to current module. So whenever we spawn module, we're gonna say uh, the uh, current module uh, is equal to the instantiated one, right? And we're gonna check if uh, current module. It's the last Current module is equal to uh, if if current module. People gotta yell. I don't know why people gotta yell here. Current module uh, is equal to null, or it's yeah, it's equal to null. So if it's zero, that means we do not have any object, which means it's the first one. Then we just want to uh, else or uh, it's not equal to null. We're gonna check it's not equal to null because that's gonna be the most often case. Else, um, we're gonna do that. Okay, so let's just do this, right? Uh, this is something we want to do when there is nothing. We just wanna spawn it in the uh, in the middle of the scene because that's the first one. Uh, if the current module is not equal to null, so if there's something, we want to spawn it at the location of the uh, newly created current module. We want to spawn it at the uh, current. We're gonna have to get the current module. Let's create a module of current module script. And it's gonna be equal to module uh, current module dot get component module. Right. I feel weird saying module now. Uh, current module script and. Um, dot next module spawn point dot transform that position right we're going to want to spawn it there right uh no that's not how it works from unity engine vector 3 to unity engine transform what oh it needs a transform as the parent i don't want a parent um let's do this and what we'll do is we'll just put the rotation as well rotation now it works so if we don't have a module it's just gonna spawn it in the middle if we do have a module we're gonna spawn the module in the current module that oi giffy navi what's up you just woke up that's great dude you had a good night's sleep i guess I'm doing great. We're making a game. We're making a game has COVID in it. Yeah. Uh, so whenever we spawn the module, we want to we want to spawn the module each time we uh, public. Oh, this is gonna be private. Yeah. Um, and we can just call 
this public and we need uh, this to be called each time uh, yeah we need this to be called each time uh, the module collider is uh, we could yeah we could use it uh, but we're gonna need a new C sharp script module collider yeah okay and this thing is just gonna have a simple method yep 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 you guys know each other what's it about it's about coronavirus so you run and then you have to dodge like sick people and shit or you die or you can pick up masks and uh, hand sanitizers and shit and then you you have a higher chance of living that's basically it <laughs> simple mobile game so we're gonna have a void on uh, private void, private void on uh, collider enter, right? And we're gonna check if collision dot game object dot tag is equal to player. So if the player entered, well, that would be a good if statement if I typed if. Uh, then we want to just uh, call the function spawn module, which we're gonna have to be sure that private void uh, start we have a reference to our private scene generator Gen generator generator and uh, in here we're gonna say generator is equal to find game object with game object uh, dot find game object with tag game manager and i know this is not good this is just for now later we do it better whoop you gotta go oh man thanks for joining though and i'll see you next time have a nice day have a nice day scene generator like that right i know this is not good i just want to test if this works if it does we good we, we can fix it if it doesn't then we got a problem right and here we can just call generator dot spawn our uh, generate new module is that yeah that's the, that's the function so we can just generate the new module each time a player does that right uh, so technically whenever we reach that point it should generate a new module technically so this is gonna spawn at zero zero zero, which is here. So that's good. Okay. Um, I don't see why this won't work. Uh, because if we have the generator there, and wait, we need to go. We don't need to go to the module and give the collider the module collider. Yeah. So now it can whenever it spawns, it gets that, and uh, that's good. That's good. Should go. Ah. Something bit me. Something bit me. Good. Now this module we can delete, I'm pretty sure. And our game manager does have a scene generator and we do need to give it a module. Let's see if this works. Big moment of truth here. Let's see. Let's just set the game manager to zero zero zero. Let's put that up for everyone to see. Maximize. Go. Okay. Ah, my bad, my bad. No, 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 not yet, not yet. This has to be tagged as player, and this game manager, we have to add a controller or a tag for um, game manager. Save that. Yeah, tag game manager. It's gonna have a tag game manager. Good, good. Okay, let's go, let's go. We spawn the module, we go. Somewhere along the lines, we enter that. Is this working? Is it working? Wait, 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 wait. We can run both scenes okay is it working if it is I'm gonna be super happy with it it's working now when we get to the middle point it stops okay I have an idea I have an idea because this is not marked as a trigger And this should be on collision enter. This should be on trigger enter. 
collider collider if collider dot game object that tag is player good now it should work okay let's pretend that did not happen let's get it going now this should be very unoptimized but then again it should work it's spawning them okay it spawned too many of them and trigger enter okay one trigger enter is called once right private uh, void on trigger enter Collider on trigger enter collider. When a game object collides with another game object, you close on trigger enter. Launching happens on the fixed update function when two game objects go to the collider in order, not always the point. We must contain a collider component, one must have colliders, trigger number one contain a rigid body. Good. Good. So this will need rigid body. No, 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 no. Uh, it only needs to get called once. So uh, we're gonna hard code the shit out of this again. Uh, we're gonna have a, a private uh, void um, private void, private boolean, uh, collided. And by default, it's going to be false. So whenever we start the game, it's false. Let's just also make sure by saying collided equals false whenever we start the game. Fine. And whenever, uh, the, this happens, we're going to check it. We're going to set that to true. And here we're going to check and collided is equal to um, false is equal to true is equal to false so this will make sure that it only gets called once and now you can hear the train in the background that's good it's raining outside oh, god damn it it's raining outside dude it was such a nice day I hoped I would go train and now it's raining fucking shit all right so we got the first module get to the middle spawns another module great we go more spawns another yeah boys we did it holy shit it's unoptimized as hell but it does work okay this is why you do games now whenever we want to delete the old module behind us shit's gotta happen okay shit's gotta happen so in the scene generate we're gonna spawn module and whenever we generate new module we wanna uh, have a private void uh, delete old module now this is gonna be super easy to do now it's like I did a line of coke we're going okay uh, we're gonna call delete old module right and old module is actually the current module I know I know what the fuck yeah exactly so whenever we collide with the object we need to set the or actually before we instantiate a new one right let me think let me think Right, so before we instantiate the new module, the old module becomes the current module. So we're gonna say old module is equal to current module. Bam. And now here, when we delete old module, we can just say destroy old module. This is gonna work. Trust me on this, this is gonna work. Okay, this is gonna work. Uh, uh, this is gonna work. So we need to go to our player motor and increase the speed a bit. Uh, moving now from let's let's do 7.5, so like 50% um, faster. Let's go. We spawn it. Well, <laughs> you delete the current one and it spawned the new one. Okay, the old one. The old module is uh, which one? The first one we spawn. 
coding speed run yes yeah, speed run yeah we, we should do that one time like coding something real quick um what module like what's the current module current module is the this one it's the one we just spawned back there the first one we spawned So, it should spawn module first. So, this gets called, right. When we delete it, let's just debug that log, uh, the, the, the current module or the old module that name, right? So, we want to see which, which module it's deleting. It might help me think, okay? Eating my own hair, my new diet. Right, so the old module is the first one. Right, so it set the first one as the current module, current module, current module. This should work though. Old module, wait. Try use on trigger exit. Let's skip one. I do have to skip one, yeah. Zox, what the fuck, dude? You didn't even say hi, dude. I haven't seen you in a while, Zox. What's up, Zox? See, Zox, Zox. Zox. Um, try use on trigger exit. You mean when whenever I exit, it deletes the old one? Jay, you're a fucking genius. You're a fucking genius. Dude, you're a genius. Dude, how the... F I didn't even think of that. Dude, you're a, you're a wizard, Harry. You guys can hear the vacuum. Collider. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're just gonna rename this to other. Other, like that. Oh, it's so fucking loud in here. Oh, uh, Zox, why'd you retract the message? Dude, no. Uh, collided. Uh... So we're gonna uh, have to uh, spread this out into two of them, right? Uh, these are both gonna have to be public. Public methods, both of them. Public method, this one as well. So uh, our mesh collider to generate a new module. This is gonna be spawn module, and this is gonna be generator that uh, destroy or delete old module. Yeah, we could also use a like an enumerator, but this this one I like much more. I like how you think, dude. Right, so it's gonna. Uh, yeah, but it should first spawn that and then delete it. Wait, what, 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 should spawn it, old module is equal to current module. So it should set it to that one and then delete. Ah, I see what's happening. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So technically this would work very simply like this. So if we take this and we size up the, the collider. Okay, I see, yeah. I did it right, but wrong. So if we decide... Oh, shit. <coughs> oh. Yeah, yeah. We can set this to 25. That's fucking large, man. That's fucking large. Right. Oh, man. Like five... And do this. No. The collider center. X, Z, 3, like that. 2.5. Yeah, let's do that. So now it's going to delete it once we're off it, which is good because that's all one thing we want. Right. So take a look at this. This is. Uh, yeah, I could use a delay, but I just want to see if this works. 
you see so whenever we do we could use do it like that or we could uh, I think this is much better because later when the player will move much faster when the player will move much faster um, uh, when the player will move much faster in 0 0.5 seconds there will be a lot more modules than this so I think this is a great system and uh, wait let's see the stats there's only four batches okay we'll see but for now there's a infinite amount you could do and what I want to do is actually make the collider a bit bigger so you it's seamless you can't really see it when it's deleted we could go for like 7.5 and then increase this to like what three five no four three point seven five yeah okay so we're gonna spawn a new one and only here are we gonna destroy the uh, back one right so whenever we start we're gonna do this you know and now it spawns and now it deletes and it's pretty seamless so that's good we did it we did it okay um, I think I'm gonna end it for now I have to go lunch do lunch food you know people eat food uh, so I'm gonna have to do that but I had a fucking amazing stream and hopefully I'm gonna continue this very soon tomorrow hopefully we'll see though oh no I have no, I can do it tomorrow. Um, yeah. So, I mean, here, basically, we just need those pickups to increase and decrease the immunity. And we need acids. That's it. That's like it, it. So, yeah. That's going to be super fun to do. Um, yeah. I'll see you tomorrow, then. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all for the donations. Uh, I will be uh, making sure those are uh, taken care of. I don't know why I said that. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much, guys. And I will see you next time. Have a nice day. Have an amazing day. And I love you all. Bye-bye. That was waving. That was me waving. Waving, waving. Bye-bye, guys.